Welcome to Church Online as we gather together in this way and a special welcome if you're with us for the first time. My name is Lynn and I have the privilege of being the Minister at Adelaide West. Today is the fifth Sunday of the month when we have people sharing on where do you see God at work in your life, inspiring us to share our stories and Linton Wilcox is sharing today and we look forward to that. You know, the Bible is an amazing collection of stories, people sharing stories over the ages, stories of God at work in the world. And there's a bunch of us reading the Bible one chapter per day, some in the New Testament, some in the Old Testament. We start the New Testament over again in November, and the Old Testament is now into 1 Kings. You're invited to join us on this journey. If you would like a calendar, they're available on the Facebook uh, in the AWAC group or send me an email, I'd love to send it to you. As we begin our worship, we light a candle as a reminder that Christ is the light of the world. And our living hope, present with us as we gather. We praise the Lord of all creation. Praise the Lord, all you people. Praise the Lord with all your life in all that you do, as long as you live. Praise God in the morning and praise God in the evening. Praise God when you rise and praise God when you rest. Praise God in times of plenty and in the times when there is less. In times of peace and in times of strife. When you are thriving and when you are downcast. In all of your life, in all that you do. As long as you live, praise the Lord of heaven and earth.
I love hearing stories of God at work. The Bible is full of them. It's one of the joys of reading the Bible. And I love hearing stories of God at work in people's lives today as well. We can do that in articles and books and autobiographies and we can share them together. It's one of the joys of being part of a small group or a connect group. It's a place where we share together and pray together, support each other in the lows and rejoice with each other in the highs. We're inspired as we hear the stories of others, inspired to look for God at work in our own lives, in our everyday lives, at work, at home, in the community, wherever we are. Inspired to look for God at work in the lives of others and at work in our communities and in our world. I often say that I turn up here to church to see what God is up to, in the church and in the community around us, and we get to be a part of that, part of God's mission. We're invited to participate in what God is up to, and I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. Today, Linton is sharing here online and also at the 11am service. At the 5pm service tonight, we're, we're all bringing stories to share and we'll write them on a whiteboard together. You know, where do you see God at work in your life? I encourage you to share that with others. Share the stories together because the stories encourage us, inspire us and uplift us, both in the sharing and in the listening. Reading this morning is from Psalm 86, and we'll be reading from the Good News Bible. A prayer for help. Listen to me, Lord, and answer me, for I am helpless and weak. Save me from death, because I am loyal to you. Save me, for I am your servant, and I trust in you. You are my God, so be merciful to me. I pray to you all day long. Make your servant glad, O Lord, because my prayers go up to you. You are good to us and forgiving, full of constant love for all who pray to you. Listen, Lord, to my prayer. Hear my cries for help. I call to you in times of trouble because you answer my prayers. There is no God like you, O Lord. Not one has done what you have done. All the nations that you have created will come and bow down to you. They will praise your greatness. You are mighty and do wonderful things. You alone are God. Teach me, Lord, what you want me to do, and I will obey you faithfully. Teach me to serve you with complete devotion. I will praise you with all my heart, O Lord my God. I will proclaim your greatness forever. How great is your constant love for me. You have saved me from the grave itself. The proud are coming against me, O God. A cruel gang is trying to kill me, people who pay no attention to you. But you, O Lord, are a merciful and loving God, always patient, always kind, always faithful. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Strengthen me and save me, because I serve you just as my mother did. Show me proof of your goodness, Lord. Those who hate me will be ashamed when they see that you have given me comfort and help. Hear the word of the Lord. Amen. So where do I see God at work in my life? My subtitle for this is, How does a chemical engineer become a hospital chaplain? Well, let's start with Psalm 86 that was read re before. This was recently shared with me by an elderly Coptic Christian man who was with his unwell wife in the Royal Adelaide Hospital when I visited her to offer pastoral care a few weeks ago. He had memorised it as a young man and he quoted it verbatim as a blessing for me. It struck me how David spoke to God in such raw, honest and an open manner. This could just as well be my own prayer, and indeed the Psalms have become very precious to me in recent days, and are such a rich resource. So where does this story have its beginnings? 
in an unhappy ending. Monday, May 15th, 2016 is a date I will long remember. I just returned from two weeks leave to my job, which I thoroughly enjoyed, well mostly, and that I was, by all reports, apparently pretty good at. I was even beginning to think this might just be the job I could enjoy through until retirement. Now there had been storm clouds brewing, but I considered myself part of the solution and indeed had even been to a meeting with senior management just before taking leave to offer ideas and suggestions at how we might get through this storm. However, there was also significant changes that occurred in management earlier that year, so little prepared me for the return to work on that morning to be summoned to a meeting and be told the company no longer needed me and that, along with many others, were being made redundant. I had not seen this coming and it hurt. There are many negative feelings that I associate with that time. I suspect others here have or perhaps still are having similar experiences. When life as it once was had seemed good, stable, ongoing, even blessed by God, is suddenly no longer, and the future is anything but certain. For others, it might be a family crisis, serious illness, an accident, some dispute or even a natural disaster, even a global pandemic. However, what I am coming to see is that God is at work in this for me, for my good, and I'm even becoming a bit grateful that that redundancy occurred. So during what seemed like a prolonged season of difficulty and some respects is still going, I have been sustained. We have been sustained as a family. Our needs are met. God has provided and there has been growth. One such area was an opportunity to take, undertake some voluntary roles and in particular in my case in prisons. The morning of the church's community fair in 2020 is the morning I associate hearing God speak clearly. It was about 8.30 in the morning and I was in the process of helping set things up. Now, I don't know what image is conjured up in your mind when you think of God or Jesus. It's probably someone that looks like Ferg or even perhaps Lynn. Well, for me, it was someone who looked like Ian Dow. Oh, wait a minute, it was Ian. He approached me with an innocent enough question, but it definitely was a God moment for me. Ian sought me out that morning because my name had come to his mind when he was considering a vacancy that had come up for a prison chaplain to be supplied through the Uniting Church. The simple enough question was, would I consider applying? I was taken aback. This was a surprise. My initial thoughts were all the reasons why not. It was a crazy idea. I didn't have the qualifications. I had no experience, my age, and yeah, I had a bit of fear as well. Uh, but yet, so I prayed. I sought God's will, made inquiries, and despite obvious deficiencies, I found warmth and encouragement from those involved. And so I did apply. To my surprise, I was offered an interview. So it all had a happy ending then, and a new beginning. Right? Wrong. Despite interviewing very well, I was not offered the position. There were several reasons, which initially I did not fully absorb, as they seemed to be questioning had I not heard God right, or was it them that was not listening? But in time, I considered the feedback and found much of it constructive, and one item in particular had stuck out for me, the need to do, or better to have done, clinical pastoral education, or CPE. I had researched this and made inquiries. CPE was all about developing and enriching one's pastoral and spiritual care practices and identity, largely through self-awareness via a an action reflection method of evaluation done in a small group environment. Now, a key aspect of CPE was doing relevant field experience, so you needed to be practicing chaplaincy for it to be meaningful. Well, how did that work with being rejected from the prison role? 
So despite not getting the prison roll, in late January of this year, I commenced a unit of CPE under the supervision of Reverend Liz Dyson. With her help, I switched my field experience over to chaplaincy at Ashford Hospital and commenced a 20-week, one-day-per-week placement beginning in early February. It was a thoroughly positive experience, albeit occasionally quite rough. And at another time, I might share some learnings from those early pastoral encounters. But I got to experience God at work in me as I reflected on several of these encounters using guiding questions like, how did this encounter affect me personally? How did my responses influence and affect the other person? Did I identify any personal skills and pastoral resources? What were the major concerns and underlying issues that came to light? Probably the most important, where was God in this encounter? What questions did I have with him and with my beliefs in light of the encounter? Was there an image, a song or a biblical story that came to mind that helped explain these things? And what did I discover about myself through these experiences? Now, towards the end of that CPU unit, I became aware of chaplains being sought at a number of hospitals, the QEH and Calvary in particular, and also roles at, with aged care with Rest Haven and Helping Hands. Now, three of these roles were supplied through the Uniting Church. The same people who had six months earlier interviewed me for that prison chaplaincy role. I was known to them, and the opportunities were there. A phone inquiry was made, and it immediately resulted in being asked to fill a short-term vacancy at the Royal Adelaide Hospital. And so the following Monday, less than a week later, I commenced in that role, and so it has continued to now, and is set to do so for at least a further month. Now, I want to change tack here and just share with you three encounters to illustrate where God is at work. Laurel was admitted to hospital with a life-threatening illness. Two days after her admission, things were going downhill and she became unresponsive and the family were called to her bedside. The children knew their mother had a deep and abiding faith and so sought out, with the help of staff, spiritual care. And so I received a page as the on-call chaplain that day. As I stepped into the room, I entered a quiet hush. It was broken only by the sounds of her laboured breaths. After some introductions, I invited each family member in turn to share some memories of their mother. And over the next 45 minutes, we heard story after story of her rich and long life of all the beautiful, indelible marks that she had made on her family. So while I never had the opportunity to talk to her directly, I at least got to know her a little. I then asked, what would your mother want at a time like this? What would be meaningful to her? There was hesitation and uncertainty at this point. And so the decision was to, let's go with what the chaplain feels is appropriate. Well... After some pretty rapid thought and a few prayers, I suggested they all gather around her bed, reach out and touch her, while also holding each other's hands, symbolising the family connection. I read out the words of the hymn Amazing Grace, followed by Psalm 23, both favourites of Laurel's as I had just heard. And I then invited them all to join in me in saying the Lord's Prayer. I concluded by offering a blessing over her, and for the family. This was a very simple service to honour their mother and prepare her, prepare her and themselves for her imminent passing. I was later to hear the family had been touched, welcoming the ability to express their feelings. It's not uncommon to hear the words, I don't want to be any bother, spoken by an elderly person who finds himself unexpectedly in hospital and yet their loved ones supporting them want the help and indeed be bothered. Such was the case with 78-year-old Ken and his two daughters as they sought to come to terms with the prognosis that meant he would not be going home, the home that he had built 50 years earlier. 
as I listened to the discussion, I was able to form an understanding of the love that each had for the other, and so shared this observation on the basis. And they offered a prayer to trust God's guidance in making the hard decisions to come, and it assured them of his presence. This seemed to ease the tensions that had built up and reminded and reassured them of their purpose and that restored peace and a sense of hope. In the last story, there are some precious times when you wonder who is ministering to whom. You get a call for a chaplain's visit thinking you might be taking into the room something to encourage, comfort, promote wellness, nurture peace and such, when you suddenly realise the reverse is happening to you. When the faith, resilience and warmth ex exuded by the patient blesses you in rich measure. This is how I remember Hazel. I first met her in ICU with tubes and wires sticking all out over the place as she fought to survive a bleed on her brain. Her daughter had brought her into the Royal Adelaide into emergency and asked for a chaplain to visit, fearing the worst, and so I did. Four weeks and several visits later, I said farewell to Hazel as she was discharged to her daughter's care, well on the way to a full recovery. Over that time, as she found first her smile, then her voice, and finally sufficient mobility to walk again, I experienced myself through Hazel a deep touch of God's love and care. So in sharing these stories, it is my hope and prayer that you will see our wonderful God at work, and to him be the glory. Amen.
Let's pray together. Loving God, thank you that you listen to us and answer us, that you hear our prayers and our cries for help. Thank you for your mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, forgive us for the things that hinder us from seeing you at work, our focus on material things, our priorities and attitudes that aren't of you, for the hindrances in our lives to you being able to work in us and through us. And thank you that these things and all our sins are forgiven as you are good to us and forgiving, full of constant love for all who pray to you. Holy Spirit, teach us what you want us to do. Teach us to serve you with complete devotion. Help us to obey faithfully. Lord God, we bring you our prayers for our world. We pray that your kingdom will come to this world, that love will reign. We pray for places where there is war, hunger and oppression. We pray for the world as it struggles with COVID and pray for good news stories as it recovers. Be with those on the front lines, with those infected, with those families that are separated. We pray for New South Wales, ACT and Victoria as they ease restrictions and for our nation as we look to open up the borders. We pray for unity together as we move forward and we pray for the vaccination rate to continue to rise. Holy Spirit, we pray for the people and situations that are on our hearts today. We lift them to you and we pray that your grace and your mercy and your peace would surround them. We pray for healing for those who need healing. And we pray for love and laughter for those who feel lost in the world. We continue to bring you our gifts, financial and practical, and we pray that they would share the story of your great love. We pray our prayers in the name of Jesus, our living hope, who has set us free. Amen. How great the chasm that lay between us How high the mountain I could not climb In desperation I turned to heaven And spoke your name into the night Then through the darkness Your loving kindness Tore through the shadows of my soul the work is finished, the end is written, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages. Step down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of Kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ my living hope hallelujah praise the one who set me free hallelujah death has lost its grip on me you have broken every chain there's salvation in your name jesus christ my living hope It's grip on me, you have broken. 
broken every chain There's salvation in your name Jesus Christ, my living hope Then came the, the morning that sealed the promise Your buried body began to breathe Out of the silence the roaring lion Declared the grave has no claim on me Then came the morning that sealed the promise Your buried body began to breathe Out of the silence the roaring lion Declared the grave has no claim on me Oh, Jesus, yours is the victory. Hallelujah. Praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah. Death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Jesus Christ, my living. Jesus Christ is our living hope. And we pray that this service has brought you hope today. If you would like prayer, please send us an email or press the prayer button if you're watching live. We would love to pray for you. Next week, we'll be sharing communion. So if you'd like to have um, some juice and some crackers or some bread ready for that, that would be great. Thanks to Linton for sharing with us today. It's been beautiful to be able to hear part of his story. This week, be inspired by the stories of God at work in the world, by what we've heard and what we read in the Bible. Look for God at work in everyday life. Look for God at work in others and pray for God to be continually at work in your life. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the friendship, fellowship and unity of the Holy Spirit be with you today and remain with you always. Amen. Blessings on your week.